can turn the world down with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can have the time, why don't you take it You're gonna make it after all scene, garbage collection in New York has come to a standstill until the sanitation workers and the city come to terms on a new wage hike. Spokesman for the striking workers said that unless their demands are met, they will continue to refuse to collect the refuse. <laughs> Meanwhile, the mess mounts. Oh, isn't that awful? Yeah, I sure hope it doesn't happen here. I was talking about Ted. <laughs> Till tomorrow at six, this is Ted Baxter saying. This is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. What did you say on my calendar here? You wrote important and then made some squiggly lines after it. Oh, yeah, I must have been in a hurry. I wrote it in shorthand. Uh, you have the mayor's commission meeting on crime and violence tonight at eight. Ah, I'm glad I caught that. If I missed that meeting, they'd kill me. Well, how do you qualify as an expert on violence, Lou? Wait till Ted gets here. I'll show you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grant, don't forget tomorrow night you have the Twin Lakes Homeowners Association meeting. I just bought a couple of tickets to a big fundraising banquet. I gotta go to that homeowner's meeting. It's being held at my house. <laughs> Murray, you wanna take these tickets and go to my place? No, gee, I'd love to, Lou, but I'm on the Health and Welfare Committee of my union, and we have a meeting tomorrow night. Well, uh, Mr. Grant, if you can't get anybody else, I'll be happy to go to the banquet in your place. Thanks anyway, Mary. Well, no, I, I will, really. I will. Well, okay. What's the banquet for, anyway? Big Brothers of America stag banquet. <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Grant, but uh, I have something else to do. No, too bad you can't go, Mary. You'd be a big hit there. I'll go. Where is it I'm going to be a big hit, Lou? The Big Brothers of America banquet. Oh, really? I didn't know we had a club. What do my little brother hears about this? Uh, no, Ted, you, you don't get the idea. Yeah, you volunteer to be a big brother to an underprivileged kid. It's great. You take him to ball games and dinner and just be his pal. I don't think I'd be any good at that. I can't even do that with my real brother. Uh, I couldn't go anyway. It's Tuesday night. Now, what's so special about Tuesday night? Well, I volunteered to entertain the troops at local armed forces bases. Oh, gee, Ted, that's very nice. Uh, what is it that you do? A little comedy act. <laughs> yeah, he's going to read the news to them and break them up. Well, they asked me to come and... I just couldn't refuse, right, Ted? <laughs> right. I know I shouldn't ask this, but just what kind of a comedy act do you do? I do a ventriloquist act. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Whose knee do you sit on? <laughs> now, I don't know how all of you find the time to do all these things in addition to your jobs. I... Mr. Grant's got three meetings this week. And you've got one. Two. Uh, two. Ed's doing that show. I just don't know how you find the time. I feel so... You know what I am doing tomorrow night while you're at your meeting and you're at your meeting and you're entertaining the troops? I'm washing my hair. Mary, I'd give up all my outside activities of <laughs> washing my hair to take up a whole evening. <laughs> I forget, if you want to loosen something, do you turn it uh, clockwise or uh, counterclockwise? Mm -hmm. Counterclockwise. Well, I think I just tightened it tighter. Mary, we're not strong enough to loosen it. Maybe I'll just have to go out and hail a man. <laughs> Got it. Too bad. <laughs> Morning, Phyllis. Oh, my, my. <laughs> You girls certainly do manage to find quaint ways to fill your evening. Yeah, well, the chain is broken on Rhoda's bike. Oh, too much weight, I guess. <laughs> so 
right, Phyllis. I was sitting on my boyfriend's shoulders when he was peddling. <laughs> Rhoda and I have decided to take up biking. Rhoda, I had no idea you were so interested in ecology. Who's interested in ecology? I'm interested in my thighs. My ecology group is uh, trying to eliminate cars from the city and get people to use bicycles instead. Phyllis, what was that you were driving out of your garage this morning? It was a very big thing with a lot of black smoke coming out the back of it. Well, I have to use my car. My other civic groups are important too, you know. I don't have the time to just go peddling all over town. Phyllis, where do you find the time? You make the time, Mary, if you're a concerned citizen. There's no reason you couldn't. You have no ties, no responsibilities, no one who needs you. You need a Phyllis. Who would you be bugging right now if she weren't here? No, she's right. I should try to make the time. Well, far be it from me to try to influence you, Mary, but uh, joining some sort of a civic group wouldn't hurt your social life either. Uh -uh. No, I'm not looking for a way to meet men. I am looking for a way to do something, to be involved. You know, Mary, you're right. It's important for us to get actively interested in, in, in civic affairs to become better citizens. Right. And if along the way we happen to meet a couple of cute new guys. No, Rhoda! I don't want to do this to meet men. Phyllis, are there any groups that are exclusively female? Harry, let's not be fanatics about this. <laughs> Let me see here now. Exclusively female. Wait, here it is. No. What? Brownies. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. A new group, Women for Better Government. And they're having their first meeting tonight at 8.30 in the Civic Auditorium. Tonight, huh? That sounds pretty good. Hey, you want to go with me? Well, what do I want to go there for? Who knows? You might find it more stimulating than watching roller derby on TV. <laughs> Come on, go with me. Why don't you go upstairs and change? Mary, I am proud of you. All right. All right, ma'am, I'll go. But well, why do I have to change my clothes? For a bunch of women? Wait, maybe there'll be a parking attendant. Oh. <laughs> You want some? Nah. I'll just uh, put your box of stuff down here, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I, I really like tonight. I did. I mean, I, I, I have to admit, I was, you know, a little apprehensive at first. I mean, you know, the thought of all those women, but uh, I thought it was pretty good. I liked the speech that Mrs. Hendricks gave, didn't you? Eh. Boy, there is a woman who has really done her share. Did you know that she is personally responsible for three bills being introduced in the legislature this year? Think of her. Think of her. Think of him. Who? Him, that's who. Standing up there next to her. Oh, you mean the uh, governor's assistant? Yeah, Mary. The only man in the room. <laughs> I know. Uh, like the plans that he showed us for more glass bottle recycling centers. Positively gorgeous. People shouldn't have to drive 20 miles to get to one. You know, one should be living in your house at all times. I mean, I think if you, if you make it convenient for people, they will cooperate and take their bottles into the centers. Okay, what's wrong? He was crazy about you. He was not. He was too, Mary. Come on now. During the question and answer period, when you ask a question, he left the podium, came down into the audience, asked me to move over, and then sat down next to you and answered you personally for 15 minutes. That's when I thought to myself, Rhoda, he's interested in her. Rhoda, he did not come down off the stage. With his eyes, he did. <laughs> what are you smiling? Um, sorry. Mary, listen, don't defend yourself to me. Believe me, I know why you went to that meeting. Not to meet men. Well, so you got unlucky. You have my sympathy. Come on, Rhoda. I didn't meet him. I wish I had. I think he was pretty attractive, uh, wasn't he? Yeah. He didn't even get my name. Well, he got mine. I took off my name tag and pinned it to his jacket. <laughs> I'm tired. Can I leave this down here for tonight? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it'll be gone in the morning. <laughs> See you tomorrow, kid. Right. Hello? Oh, hi. Well, of course I remember you. 
I mean, we only met an hour ago. <laughs> and... Oh, wait, listen, you didn't have to do all that. I mean, I, I would have given you my number. <laughs> Lunch tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'd like that. I'd, uh, why, why don't you call me at my office tomorrow morning? Uh, WJM TV? All right, fine. I'll, I'll talk to you then. Goodbye. How? <laughs> How, uh, what? How did he get your number? Oh, simple matter to get a person's number. He didn't know your name. He got my license plate number as we were driving away. <laughs> yeah. And then he stopped a highway patrolman and had him call in and get my name, address, and phone number. It's simple. Yeah, man. That's happened to me. I once had a guy track me down like that. Yeah, yeah. a highway patrolman. $63 speeding ticket. Or a week in jail. Mary? Yes, sir? Mary? You have to go shopping for me today, for my wife's birthday. I usually give her money to buy something for herself, but this year she wants to be surprised by you. <laughs> and you'll have to hurry. Her birthday was yesterday. Well, uh, Mr. Grant, we're kind of busy this morning. So, go on your lunch hour. Oh, well, I have uh, sort of uh, a lunch appointment. Is it a business lunch? No, no. I, I'm uh, having lunch with a friend. Oh. He's going to be awfully disappointed if I don't get her a birthday present today. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to be awfully disappointed, too. <laughs> but uh, you're having your lunch with your friend. <laughs> Mr. Grant, it's just that this lunch is uh, sort of important to me. Uh, it must be to antagonize me at 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> Mr. Grant, I, I, I... No, no, no. That's okay. I'll go out and get her a gift myself. Good. Oh, she'll hate it, but I'll get it myself. <laughs> no, what happened in there, man? Morning, guys. Mr. Grant asked me to get Mrs. Grant a birthday present, and I had to say no. Good for you, Mayor. <laughs> if you got her a present, you'd have to get Murray's wife a present, and I don't even have a wife. This isn't fair. I mean, after all, whoever thinks of my mother? What's your mother got to do with this? Well, if everyone's wife gets a present, I don't know why my mother... <laughs> You can't make it for lunch? But I, I, uh, when, now? I'll be downstairs in 10 minutes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Come in. Uh, Mr. Grant, after having, uh, thought about it, uh, I have decided that I would be delighted to buy Mrs. Grant a birthday present at lunch. He broke your lunch date, I wasn't huh? going to tell you this, but he broke my lunch uh, date. Uh, he made another date for just uh, 10 minutes from now downstairs for coffee, if, if it's all right with you. I mean, I know it sounds a, a little weird, but you see, he's a very busy... Uh, just a minute. Uh, I don't want to know who it is you're running out to meet. You know, the policy around here is that we don't bring our personal lives into the newsroom. Right. Just do your work. Right. Make sure you get Edie a nice present. <laughs> Has Mrs. Grant given you any hints as uh, to what she'd like her surprise to be? Only for 20 years. But it's too late now. The species is extinct. <laughs> well, I I've got plenty of time to find her something really nice. Mm -hmm. huh? Because now, you know, before I couldn't. I had yeah. a problem because of the lunch. But now I can. I can just... I'm gone. I'm gone. Mary, I, uh... I just want you to know I appreciate what you're doing. Oh. Would you like a nice gold locket with my picture in it? <laughs> 
That would uh, be very nice. I mean, for my wife. Oh, better. Better. <laughs>
Many times I've been left alone while Lars has gone out on emergency house calls. Phyllis, Lars is a dermatologist. When does he ever make house calls? Well, on weekends, he and another doctor take each other's calls. He's a bone specialist. <laughs> sure, yeah. When somebody breaks their leg, Lars goes to the house and tells them not to scratch it. <laughs> well, what do you think of these? Oh, yeah, beautiful. I have just the thing for that dress. I'll be right back. <laughs> Mary, here they are. My best earrings. Antique gold. Oh, Phyllis, they are beautiful. Thank you. And they are perfect with this gorse. They're yes. perfect. Why do you think I ran downstairs to get them? <laughs> they really do look great. Thank you. Oh. Just be very, very careful with them. They've been in my family for generations. I, I don't know what I'd do if you lost them. They're insured, of course, but you know how mother hands them down to daughter and, and mother hands them down to daughter. And <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Oh, hi. No, I... No, I wouldn't mind at all. Right, bye-bye. Wouldn't mind what? Meeting him downstairs. He just called from his car to say he's running a little late. Oh. But I'm just so thrilled he didn't call to cancel again. I'd take a bus and meet him at the restaurant. <laughs> well, here I go. <laughs> See you in the morning. Have fun, man. Good luck, Mary. Thanks. I wonder if this is his car now. Oh, it's a limousine. Mm. Oh, here comes, here comes Mary now. Oh, the, the, the car door is opening. How's he look? Oh, darn, he's not getting out. A chauffeur is. How's he look? Oh, they're, <laughs> they're driving off now. Very slowly. Now picking up speed. <laughs> they're rounding the corner. And they're off on their big date. <laughs> oh, you're back. I thought you fell off. <laughs> I'm so pleased that Mary's finally going out with somebody worthwhile. Yeah, instead of all those gangsters she usually runs with. <laughs> When a girl is barely 30 and attractive, has a nice personality, I find it difficult to understand why she isn't married. You're talking about Mary? Of course. Because you can't understand why I'm not married. <laughs> of course. Do me a favor, Phyllis. Would you write it down and send it to my mother? She doesn't understand. <laughs> there you are. And here I am. Mary! What are you doing back here? It happened again. The minute I got into his car, the phone rang. It was the governor. And because the governor was out of town, he had to go somewhere in his place. Well, why didn't you go with him? Because he had to go to Anchorage, Alaska. Why didn't you go with him? <laughs> oh, boy, all that money and the dress never got off a block. <laughs> Notice the kid. You can wear it again. What again? No more agains with him. Well, it's got to be the shortest romance on record. Exactly. What do I want to get involved with someone like that for? Two minutes here, a phone call there, and he's trying to impress me. Imagine what it would be like if we were going together and he started taking me for granted. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving town, Ted? That's too bad. I'll drive you to the airport. No, no. I keep my dummy in this thing. I mean, I mean my hand, hand puppet. I'll show it to you. Hi, guys. <laughs> That's cute. Well, thanks for the compliment, Mary. <laughs> you know, the little kids at the Air Force Base really ate up my act last night. The kids? Yeah, well, some of the officers brought their kids. Oh. Fuzzy and I were a real smash. Right, Fuzzo? Yep. <laughs> you know, I got to think of. <laughs> That's always trouble. Well, if my show could have a little more kid appeal, it might help the ratings. Well, uh, what do, did you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. Uh, something like a kid's view of the news, you know, five minutes or so. This is Ted Baxter and Fuzzy with the latest round of the news. News, N-E-W-S, news. 
You're hired. You out. <laughs> Thank you.